welcome to another edition of Real Estate Investor Talk. And I'm sitting here in Johannesburg uh, with Robert Kiyosaki and also Tom Wheelwright, who's his tax expert. And uh, let's talk about the, the world economy where we are right now. Where are we placed with this new financial crash? A crash is like an earthquake. You know, like in California, they know it's coming. Right. They just don't know when. But there have been so many warnings in the last two years in the financial markets. The number one biggest warning is the thing on the 10-year uh, U.S. Treasury. You know, it's, there was a flash crash in the Treasury. That's unheard of. Because bonds are very stable. We expect it in stocks, <clears throat> but not the bond market. So the four shocks are coming. When it's going to hit? Nobody knows. But it's always a good time. You know, up or down, if you're a professional investor, it's always a good time. Right. It's always an opportunity. Absolutely. So what are the kind of things that we can prepare ourselves for that? What can we do? Well, number one, you have to have a good tax advisor. We'll every, to Tom now. Yeah. yeah. Because everything you do is a tax consequence. Right. So the good news is, is right now, in my business, in, re in real estate, apartment houses are the hottest things going. You know, every private equity company, every hedge fund, they're piling into apartment houses at the top of the market. Right. So guys like me are complaining, well, there's nothing to buy, but it's a great time to sell. Right. So the best thing right now is like we're selling all our junk. Right. So that's what I mean. It doesn't, it's not good or bad. It's always good or bad. And so today, you know, I'm selling like crazy big problem is taxes because right. now I have capital gains. Right. And so we sit around talking about, well, what can we do next because I can't go back in. I wish I could find another apartment house in America, 1031 mm. tax, tax free, like for like exchange. Yes. But the apartment houses are so expensive, so I'm coming out with millions in cash. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Yes. So what do I place it in is yeah. the next issue. So Tom, what do you do in the event now? You're selling all these stuff and, 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 and it's a tax event. How do you deal with it? You know, you, you always have to look at, you know, what are you going to do with the money? Mm -hmm. Once you decide what you do with the money, then you always find a way to reduce your taxes based on what you're going to do with the money. Right. But typically, as a, as a general principle, when you buy assets, you pay less tax. Yes. Okay, because the government wants you to buy assets. Mm. So in in the U.S., it could it could be oil and gas, okay, or or even clean or clean energy. There's great tax breaks there. It could be food. It could be water. It could be business. The key is to not just leave the money. If you leave the money or you spend the money, you're going to be taxed on it. Yeah, I don't want cash. So the Tom has come up with some very creative things to put our money into. But I just give you an idea. If I invest in a oil project, let's say it's a million dollars, what's my tax consequence of that? You get a million dollar deduction. Right. Well, then you so mm. that offsets my capital gains right. from the real estate. Now the, the challenge then is to find a good oil plan. Yeah. That's hard. And uh, then I, I think I know you mentioned last time you in gold, you've also done stuff in food, avocados, I think you mentioned. And, yeah, I was uh, going to buy, I, I just couldn't find a good avocado deal. Right. And then I was going to buy timber, but I couldn't find a good timber deal. So I might have to go back to oil and gas, you know what I mean? But there's a lot of things you can do, but that's why Tom travels with me. Mm. Because everything you do is a tax consequence to it. Right. So, I mean, it's a challenge for all investors to find that right deal. Right. You're saying, right, finding that sure. right deal. So, so that's a bit of a problem. But what to have a better advisor is even more important. Right. That's how you know it's a good deal without, without your tax cut. Mm. Do you find deals come to you? Are they coming? Are you searching Most for them? bad, yeah. Yeah, right. So let's talk a little bit about the future of it, because in, in, in terms of blockchain, I mean, because people love this thing called cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, yeah. Ethereum, and all that kind of stuff. Why, why, why are they good? Is it because it's like the latest thing? What, what is it? What, what, what's driving that market? Well, the guys I talk to are in it. There's three kinds of money in the world today. Money has been many things like, you know, money has been chickens and cattle. But today there's three types of money. One is God's money, which is gold and silver. The second is government money, which is fiat currency, right. as corrupt as it comes. Mm -hmm. And then the third is cryptocurrency, or people's money. Right. So people's money, in my opinion, is going after government money. Right. And the government is scrambling right now to figure out how to put regulated. 
Yes. Because if it gets that, if it gets that, boom. Yeah. So yeah. that's why the government regulations and, and the big the big Wall Street guys are in it. They have options on it and all this. And it's basically if you're if you're gonna be in crypto, you gotta study it. It's like you gotta study real estate. You gotta yeah. study avocados. You, know? yeah. Yeah. you gotta study oil. Yeah. But everybody comes up, what do you think? Should I buy it? <laughs> Don't be an idiot. But yeah. that's where pe people are lazy. Yes. They want yes. you to tell them what to do. Exactly. So when you're gonna do that, just talk to your talk yeah. to your stockbroker, they'll yeah. tell you what to do. So give the money to them, you know. Yeah. But the trading platform is blockchain. Now blockchain is gonna be the thing that's gonna I think you back the world. Because if that could be on real if, estate, if you study it. Yeah. Look, I tell, I said, it's really stupid. I was talking to this guy, so I missed out on uh, Bitcoin. I said, did you miss out on Amazon? Yeah. Did you miss out on Apple? Yeah. What else have you missed out on? So everybody wants to jump onto the next hot thing. Right. right. Yes. That's the problem. So I was at this investment conference, they had a debate. They had two guys that were for bit or crypto or blockchain and two guys who were against it. And finally, after an hour, I said, it came down to one thing. The guys that were for it were in early. They made millions. The guys who were against it missed it. Yes. That's all it was. Right. So the guys right. that made millions are for it. The guys who missed the boat are against it. So just getting back to the blockchain story, because it's such a big thing. I mean, down the line, I mean, I'm, uh, blockchain revolution, you know, I've been studying a little bit about it, and, and, and certainly I think um, in terms of real estate down the line, it, it looks like it's going to be the open ledger trading platform, which is very transparent, where well, everything's going to be, and maybe Tom, you, and, and how does it impact taxes and, and, and how people well, the way transact? I, I, the way I look at blockchain, you know, in, in, um, in the 5th century, a um, monk came up with the idea of debits on the left, credits on the right, double entry account. That's why we have financial statements. The whole world operates on income statement balance sheet. Okay, that is double entry accounting. Blockchain um, is like double entry accounting on steroids. What blockchain has the potential to do is to actually audit every single transaction. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about the real estate contracts, it's actually auditing the contracts. Mm -hmm. So it's an infallible way to do something, to enter into a contract. The challenge, of course, is that it takes an enormous amount of computing power and an enormous amount of energy. Right. So, and, so there's some technology that has to happen yeah. before the blockchain right. can, can take off. Right. Well, you've written loads and loads of books. Thanks okay. coming out pretty soon. I'm very happy. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that because, uh, I mean, we, we touched in a little bit about the fake money and, and your message there. Fake is about fake money, which is the dollar the is fake. Mm. It's fake teachers. Mm. Most school teachers are fake. They don't know what they're teaching. Mm -hmm. They just teach what they're told to teach. Like us, you know, my, I keep telling Tom, my first accounting class was in my MBA program, and that was a fake accounting teacher. Because I asked him, I said, are you an accountant? He says, yes, I am. I said, no, I said, are you an accountant? <laughs> he says, yes, I am. I have a master's in accounting. I said, do you do accounting? He goes, no. So how can you not do an accounting? I said, the only reason was I was an apprentice to my rich dad, and I had to work with real accounts. So I just, what he missed was cash flow. The teacher didn't understand cash flow. He was just going by the definition of income expense as a liability. And Tom will tell you, what defines an asset and a liability is the two words cash flow. So if cash is flowing out, it's either an expense or a liability. If cash is flowing in, it's either income or it's an asset. It's really that simple, but my accounting teacher, this yo-yo head, <laughs> I couldn't believe him. You know, you gotta be kidding. My marketing teacher was even worse. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to get a good team around you, like people like Tom. And uh, I mean, it's always finding those right people. Yes, that's the hardest part. Yeah, that's the probably most important part. Too. Yeah. How would somebody start looking for somebody like yourself in South Africa? Um, where, where, where would they start? It, well, you know, you, you really have to start getting educated because you have to know what's a good advisor and what's a bad advisor. And that's why I buy this book called Tax Free Wealth. Read okay. that. Tax Free Wealth. Tax because I've got chapter 23. Yes. I have a whole chapter on how to find a good tax advisor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes. You've got to interview them. Yes. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you very much. It was much. getting great.
insights. Uh, thank you again. And you can do it here. You can. That's right. You can absolutely. The rich, rich do things differently. They get rich. Right, so thank you very much.